pretend conversation. Like, you know, when you watch TV and the weather presenter and the news presenter have that fake chat okay. at the end. Like, mm, rebar. Really? Rebar. Yeah, okay. Mm, interesting. That's an interesting equation you were telling me about earlier. <laughs> it was. Okay. Hello, everyone. The camera's there. We mustn't look at ourselves. Hello, hello everyone. I'm Brady from Number File, and this is Dr. James Graham. Hello. hello. James is in loads of Number File videos. He's the most frequent guest and can't uh, get rid of me can't okay. get rid of you by penny one of our most popular guests as well and I know a lot of people were really interested to hear from him we've been filming upstairs at number file HQ yep. making about five or six videos we did yes I think we did about five or six videos that we've recorded which will be appearing on number file in the weeks and months to come but while James was here I as I told many of you yesterday I thought I would take advantage of the fact he was here on yes. Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it a bit odd that we're spending Valentine's Day together? It was, yeah. It was an unfortunate uh, <laughs> scheduling. It was the only day you, you were free. It was what, the only day. What do you mean unfortunate? And uh, what do you mean it's the only day I'm free? <laughs> I was, I, that, that wasn't. That wasn't. This is going happen. downhill. Let's stop that altogether. Let's talk. Let's talk to James about the things you want to talk about. A bunch of people posted questions yesterday. So I'm going to ask a few of them so those people uh, have a chance to be involved in case they're not here. And obviously you can post questions yourselves now. We'll be following it and I'll try and get some of them to James as well. The first thing I thought we should deal with is I know a lot of people may be aware and some people may not be aware that James has his own YouTube channel. Yeah. He's been doing this far longer than Number File mm -hmm. has existed. It's called Singing Banana. Of course it is. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it too much because I would rather you all watched my channels than James's channel. But a lot of you asked about it, so I'm not gonna, I'm not going to ignore it, and it's full of excellent stuff. There are three things that came up most frequently. Okay. The first thing people want to know is why your channel is called Scene Banana, <laughs> and then can you also tell us a bit about the future of it? Because obviously, mm -hmm. with all your commitments, it's a bit more sporadic in its mm -hmm. uploading. What's happening with it? What's the status of it? And lastly, a lot of people have asked as you do that, and I do my things on YouTube, how did we come to meet via, mm -hmm. and so can you tell people about, I mean, I know the answer to that question. Okay, all right, but okay. You can, you can tell people, those three things. All right, so, so I do have my own YouTube channel, Singing Banana, of course it is, why wouldn't it be called Singing Banana? Now, Singing Banana is my online name, and it has been since I was like 17. So, oh, by the way, if you search for Singing Banana, if you find another Singing Banana online, don't harass them because it might not be me. I know there's some other people who have decided those two words together would be fun. Uh, but it's my online name. So my channel wasn't meant to be anything more than my personal YouTube channel. So that's why it's called Singing Banana. Uh, I've been doing it for five years now. In March, it will be my fifth year from measuring from my first maths video. Uh, what, what were the other questions I was asked? You were asked about your future for it. What's the situation with right. that? Because you obviously have a lot of things on the go. So I do it in my spare time. I don't want people thinking that I do this for a living. So I, the YouTube As stuff... As opposed to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. So my YouTube stuff is in my free time. And the more I do uh, public talks and the more travelling I do and the more number file I do, unfortunately, it affects... Uh, what my my singing banana schedule, uh, which is a shame, and I don't like that either. And I and I want to do as many as I can as I can. Uh, what was the other question? What's one other? How, you were doing that. How yeah, how do you come to be involved with number five? Well, I know in the first case I was a fan of periodic videos, so I saw what you were doing for chemistry, and I wanted to do something like that for maths. Um, I try to sort of do it on Singing Banana in my own small way. Uh, and if you go back to an old Singing Banana video, there's even one where I recommend channels and I recommend periodic videos and I actually say, he, Brady's doing for chemistry what I want to do for maths. So that's actually, that's, that's actually there. And so... No, I'm doing for maths what you want to do for well, maths. No, well, exactly. <laughs> With you. Well, yeah, exactly. This is brilliant. And I was a big fan of your Bible Decks channel as well, um, which was about each book of the Bible, because that's something I don't know about. Chemistry, physics, I kind of know, and that was something that I didn't know anything about at all. So I was fascinated by those videos, like an, like an ordinary viewer. And I sent you a couple of nice messages, I think, saying, I'm loving this channel. Yeah. And if, it, if you ever think of doing maths, ask me about it. And so that opportunity came up, and you did. 
I did. You, I mean, did. you asked me about it. I did. Oh, we went we went to the pub, didn't we? And I said, I'm going to do a maths channel. What do you think? And uh, yeah, you were on board. Yeah, that was... worst thing you ever did. You can't get rid of me now. <laughs> no, or the other way around. Well, no, I'm, we're very glad to have you in our videos. Uh, a few other questions. There are loads coming in, so I will try and get to some of these. Someone hit. Someone asked, uh, "Are we both redheads, or is there strange lighting look, in the look, room?" Look, this is not ginger. This is brown. Look at my. This is brown with blonde <laughs> parts in it. That is just comes out a little bit rusty. Yeah. And it's, someone else has asked where your accent is from. Uh, my accent is Nottingham, because I'm, I'm yeah. from Nottingham originally. Funnily, I'm, for those who don't know, I'm based in Nottingham. That's where I, I work on Number File. James actually lives in Cambridge now. Yes. But uh, you are in Nottingham today. Back I, in am, I am born and bred Nottingham, uh, and I left when I was 17. Uh, but I, I am. This is a Midlands accent. It's a fairly neutral accent, uh, maybe on the slightly northern th th side of things. And if anyone's really confused, because I said I live in Nottingham, I am from Australia originally, so <laughs> yeah. I don't have a Nottingham accent. Yes. We had quite a few questions. People asked a lot about your background, but in particular, quite a few people have asked about what you did for your PhD. You oh. obviously have a PhD. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your research, what your, your hardcore math was? Right, so my PhD, uh, if I start off in broad terms, it was about something called group theory. Group theory is part of maths, which is about symmetry. So it's the maths of symmetry. Uh, so if you imagine a square like that, and if I rotate the square a quarter turn, you get a square again. So, so that's like ordinary symmetry. If you flip the square, you get a square again. Uh, if I rotate the square four quarter turns, I get back to where I started. So things like that, that's the symmetry of a square. But mathematically speaking, symmetry covers a lot of sins. Uh, symmetry means there's something we care about that we want to stay the same. So it might be shape, it might be volume or length or angle. There's something we care about that we want to stay the same. That's group theory. And my PhD was about group theory. And it was about turning groups, which is an abstract thing, into matrices, which is a concrete thing. And it was about making a bridge between those worlds. There you go. That's a start. That's the start of my PhD. And we can go oh, we could go much deeper than that. Well, we might we might come back to it depending on what everyone asks about. I'll ask you a couple of other things from yesterday and loads of what were your favourite school subjects? Were you into mathematics at school? So, at school, I tell you what, when I did my A levels, so that's when you do um, 17 to 18 years old, you start to pick A levels in, in the UK. Uh, I picked uh, maths, physics, and chemistry. Now, maths and physics, I picked because I'm lazy. Right? Those are the subjects that were, that were easiest for me to do. Uh, actually, I wasn't going to do maths. My maths teacher made me do it. He said, you are doing maths. I said, I don't, I don't want to do maths. He said, you are doing maths. So I picked maths, physics, chemistry. Uh, chemistry was the one that I found hardest, but fascinating. I was absolutely fascinated with chemistry. 90% of my time was spent trying to keep up with chemistry because it was the one I found hardest to do. And then 10% of my time was doing maths and physics because it came naturally to me. Uh, so the answer is, I'm slightly lazy. I picked the subject that came most naturally to me. But then I continued to do it. And at university, that's when I really started to see the beauty of mathematics, because real mathematics that I care about is about proof. And that's what you get to do at university. That's when you start to be really creative about mathematics. That's why I continue to do it. It's the proof. Proof is brilliant. Well, funnily, you should say that, because a question that has come in recently is, what mathematical proof is most surprising to you? Or maybe just interesting, can you talk about a proof that is worth talking about? We, we, did, we did film, we did a video about mm, a proof yeah. today, didn't we? But maybe we'll keep that one a secret. Okay, so, we, okay, so I'm going to have to keep that one aside then. What well, mathematical proof? There are some things that are counterintuitive, and so those are fascinating, the ones that you don't expect. Now, those are fascinating because those are peculiar. Maths is intuitive, and I want people to understand that. Maths is an intuitive subject. What you believe to be true, more often than not, actually is true, and that's how maths works. Mathematicians are not just working through the steps. They're actually making creative leaps, creative jumps, 
say, this is how it should work, this is how it should be. So now I have to prove that it is. So you're using your intuition to guide you. So the majority of maths is intuitive in that sense. So when you get the counterintuitive ones, that's why mathematicians like talking about them. I don't want to give people the wrong idea that that's what maths is. But then you get problems like um, yeah, the Monty Hall problem, uh, which, is a, which is a game show where you have three doors, uh, you have to pick the car, and then the game show host reveals one of the doors. You've got two, two doors left. And if you change your mind, you're twice as likely to win. And that's um, very counterintuitive, very bizarre. Uh, and then you can prove that that is true. Mathematicians like to talk about those strange ones. I do want to do that for number five, but it's one of those things that's been done so many times. It's, I want to do it in a new way, and I haven't yeah. decided how we're going to do it's it. It's famous, yeah. and it's famous for a reason, uh, because it's good. And you, you actually learn something. When you start to do the proof, you actually learn something from that. Uh, you talked before about A-levels in school. Mm -hmm. Someone's asked here what grades you got in A-levels. What were your high school marks like? Well, you, you know what it's going to be, you know it's going to be A's, yes I got A's at A level, uh, in my day, where's my pipe, in my day we didn't have A stars for A level so I had A's for A levels. Okay and a few people have asked about your IQ, have you ever had an IQ test? Uh, uh, I have, yes. What did you get? What's your uh, number? <laughs> uh, so IQ, okay, I will do this, however IQ is not a good measure of intelligence and I'm oh, you not, bombed, you, you bombed out. I'm not a big <laughs> fan of it. My IQ when I was 16 when I had it tested was 155. That's really high isn't it? Uh, yeah it would put me in the top something. Yes. 155. And then I and I don't care because I'm still an idiot. If so. my IQ was 155 <laughs> I'd have it tattooed on my forehead but anyway. Uh, I'll never want to mention that again. Okay. The I'll ask you a few random ones which just because I like questions like this. Yeah, Someone on. asked, do you have a favourite mathematical symbol? And is there a mathematical symbol you'd like to change for some reason? <laughs> I don't know what the reason would be, but maybe because it's hard to write or it's a, it's a pain in the backside. <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, okay. So there are some cool symbols. Infinity is a cool symbol. I mean, I might just leave it at that. I mean, infinity is... And it has, it has sort of an implication of going forever, like a robberist. So there's a kind of a... It kind of... There's a, an intuitive sense of what it, what it means, so it's a well-chosen symbol. I like that one. Uh, ones I don't like, because in mathematics we use Greek letters a lot. That's some Greek letters that I can't write. Uh, all the Greek viewers now will mock me, but I can't. There are some Greek letters, I just don't know how to write them. And, uh, on 60 symbols we have a lot of Greek letters come up and it's a real pain trying to find them and work with them, so I, uh, I feel... I apologise to Greek viewers. Well... And you've got 155 IQ, so if you can't do it, what chance the rest of us got? Is there a practical use for Graham's number? Oh, uh, right. So Graham's number, uh, it, this massive, famous, massively uh, number, um, it came out of a practical problem. It was a mathematical problem, but it did come out of a problem. So I guess it is born of uh, a problem. And, it, and the problem was about um, uh, taking a graph. A graph is a network of dots and lines that you join together. Uh, you take a graph and how many ways that can you colour a graph and it, it was born out of a problem like that and networks and graphs have very practical uses in um, things like the on the internet and how you join things together, networks together. So I guess I guess it does have a practical use, very much so. It's not like some guy just made up this crazy number mm. and then said, now yeah. what can I use it for? Exactly right, exactly right. I mean, of course you could do that by just adding one, adding two. Yeah, no, it's famous because it has a real use. And at that point, it had, was the biggest number that had ever been used in a genuine mathematical proof. At this point, because I'm going to have a quick read of some of the questions, and because it is Valentine's Day... Mm. You brought something along with oh. you. We have made a video about these numbers and this before, featuring James. It was one of our earlier videos, so go and have a look, and I'll put it in the video description later. But uh, these are really nice. Maybe you should show these. Hold them up to the camera, and you have a chat about them. Okay, so what I've got here, these are my amicable number. There we go. Can you see that? Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. This is my amicable number, broken heart chains. So that's 220 on that one. 
can we get a focus? 284 on that one. And so the factors of 220 add up to 284, while the factors of 284 add up to 220. So they come as a pair, and in the past, these would symbolize you know, mutual friendship, perfect harm, harmony, and, and love. And so for Valentine's Day, they are, you know, really sweet. You know, it's, it's a kind of a nerdy thing, but it's, it's a really sweet thing. So we had these made, uh, 220 and 284 key rings uh, that join up. So you can give, keep one and give the other half to your true love, I guess. Can, can one obtain these? Oh, are you, oh, shall, shall, are you, shall I? Shall I? Yes, we can obtain these. Um, I have no commercial interest in this whatsoever, and, and, but if people will want to know if and, they can and get I'm, them. And I'm shy of doing it, but Matt Parker and myself, now Matt Parker is a number, another number file speaker. Uh, Matt Parker and myself, we're, we're friends in real life as well. So we, we set up a little, little company, a little business thing, where we were selling these amicable number key rings and other things as well, a couple of maths things that we came up with that we thought would be fun and other nerdy people might like. And it's called Maths Gear. I don't know if I, if I hold this up. You, you brought that just because that's what that was in. You didn't yeah, bring it Yeah, to... <laughs> that's, that's, that's the packaging, yeah. yeah. So Maths Gear and MathsGear.com. And, yeah, we sell little bits. Yeah, we're not trying to... There's some... We're not trying to be rich. If we were trying to sell those for Valentine's Day, this is probably the worst possible yes. time to do it because yes. <laughs> because it's too late. You've yeah. got you've got a year to get in your uh, your hearts for next year's Valentine's yeah. Day. How's that for poorly uh, timed advertising? <laughs> cool. Got loads of questions coming in. Uh, what do you enjoy doing apart from mathematics? Okay, uh, so my hobbies uh, these days because I spend so much time travelling and giving talks. Uh, it's difficult to do my hobbies now. Uh, if you follow my Twitter, I, I often talk about films and things because I'm I'm just sitting around in train stations watching films. Uh, so I'm a big film fan. Um, I used to do a lot of dancing. I used to do ballroom dancing, jive dancing. Uh, so I can dance a little bit. I used to do that, but it's difficult to do it these days. Uh, and juggling is my big hobby. I'm a juggler, uh, so I, you know, I juggle. Yeah, clubs and balls and knives and fire and rings and you know, I, I ride a unicycle and, and uh, it's one of my things. Fair enough. That's obviously someone knew that because one of the questions we've been asked, I was asked to ask you yeah. was is there a theoretical limit to the maximum number of mm. balls one can juggle? So they obviously knew you were a juggler or that's an amazing coincidence. <laughs> uh, so theoretical limit, uh, there should be really no theoretical limit if say we had a program of a stick man, you know, juggling balls, you know, and he, his hands can move as fast as he's like, uh, and I think there are programs like that, and so there'd be no theoretical limit because you'd throw them higher, uh, but there was a physical limit. So the record for juggling balls, I think it's thirteen. It might be eleven. Uh, clubs then is a little bit lower, so that'd be eleven or maybe it's nine. Uh, I thought it might be higher than that. Uh, yeah, clubs. I think so. It's a little. But the balls, I thought, might be higher. Oh, you thought you? Yeah, you thought the balls mm. might be higher. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think it might be thirteen. Yeah. I could be wrong about that, but it's not as high as you think it would be. Uh, and of course, the, the physical problem of it. Uh, and then, and then, uh, as a friend of mine said, and I have to credit my friend here, a friend of mine called Colin Wright. He's a mathematician and a juggler as well. And he says that the world record for juggling chainsaws is three. Because, yeah, the, the, given chainsaws, you're going to juggle three of them. Okay. While we're quickly doing a few uh, personal things about you, because people obviously have, a, have an interest, I was asked to ask you your favourite song. Uh, favourite song is uh, uh, I Want You Back by the Jackson 5. I'm a little bit camp. Sometimes I'm a little bit camp. You said it. You said it. <laughs> Sometimes I am. Do you have a favourite shape? Uh, favourite shape? Not really, not really. For the sake of an answer, let's say the circle. Because it's, you know, it's the limit, isn't it, of, of your triangles and your squares. Do you have a favourite Doctor Who alien? <laughs> okay. I'm not asking these questions. <laughs> this is you guys. Uh... I can okay. I can tell you that my students 
uh, used to call me the master. Uh, the master is Doctor Who's uh, enemy. The master is a time lord in Doctor Who, and he's Doctor Who's enemy. And they used to call me the master because when my hair is short and I'm wearing my black suit, as I like to wear a black suit, uh, I look like, or they thought I looked like, John Sim uh, from Doctor Who, who plays the master. Uh, so when I discovered that they were doing this, I, I, I was quite amused by that. And I, I came in the next lecture and I tested my microphone by tapping it. And the Doctor Who fans will know what that means. I got someone squeal. I got, I got a squeal from my, from my students. Tick. And you got a completely blank look from me. Yeah, you don't know, you don't know what's <laughs> I don't know what you're not. talking about. Do you have a favourite mathematician? A favourite mathematician? Okay. All right. There's, on my office wall, there are three photographs of mathematicians. Uh, there's a picture of a man called Alfred Young, who was the father of what I study in particular. Uh, and many people won't have heard of him. He lived about 100 years ago. Uh, there's a picture of Tom Lehrer. Tom Lehrer was a mathematician and a, a satirist in the 1960s, a comedian. He used to do satirical songs. And uh, I love him. I think he's great. The fact that he's a mathematician is just a bonus. Uh, he's brilliant. And I've got a picture of him because I love him. And the third picture is a picture of Johnny Ball. And Johnny Ball was a... He had a TV show about maths uh, when I was a kid. And so he was enthusiastic and he was a maths communicator and he wanted to, you know, he loved maths and he jumped up and down and he wanted to show you maths. And he inspired me to continue to do maths and show an interest in maths when I would not have had exposure to that sort of thing before. And you may be able to see that he is my inspiration and why I do what I do now. And you may be even be able to see that. So many people have asked to see you juggle that we're going to have to do it. Go. I've only got some cricket balls and baseballs here. So what do you want? Two baseballs and a cricket ball? Yeah, sure. I have to keep them low as well. You will. Right. There you go. What's the way to go? Right. So I get my excuses in now. If you do it, I'll do it. Oh, no, can you do it? So that's, you know, simple stuff, but, you know, you go... Oh, yeah. You know, and stuff like that, and you go... Put it back. Oh, oh, there you are. You're to. I'm impressed. All right. Good. All right, drop one. There you go. All right, here we go. Hey! There we go. You want to see one on the outside? Go on. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, I'm nervous when you throw the cricket ball in my direction. It's completely under control. <laughs> We'll have to get you doing some more of your elaborate juggling for a video. We'll find an excuse sometime. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. All right, let's get back in our uh, position after that little interlude. Favourite number? Favourite number, of course, everyone asks you a favourite number, and I don't really have a favourite number. What if I said, choose a number or I will throw this cricket ball Okay, in? in that case, I will choose the number one. Where would we be without the number one? Fair enough. The next question was, do you have a favourite number between 1 and 100? So you've also covered that, so so well done. I'll cross that off the list. Do you want to quickly just tell people what your current job is? A lot of people will have seen we made a number file video with you in which you were showcasing the Enigma machine. Yes. Uh, and that is a big part of your job as well, your real job. So maybe you want to tell people what your real life job is these days. I'll get you to come in. Yeah, a bit closer. closer. Go ahead. So, my real job. So, what my day job is I travel the UK and I travel the world and I give public talks about maths and I'm trying to inspire, I'm trying to motivate uh, people. And, you know, it might be, and I might talk to children and I might talk to adults and it might be in schools and it might be in universities and it might be in festivals. Uh, Enigma is the one I like to talk about most. Uh, so, we have that machine uh, on loan to us. And it's one of the most inspiring and fascinating and, and brilliant stories that I love to tell. Uh, and that's the majority of my time. I do that a lot. How, how you have an Enigma machine that's been lent to you or to the... Yeah, the machine that I show off uh, belongs to Simon Singh. And Simon Singh is an author of popular science books. And uh, he lends it to Cambridge University, who lend it in turn 
to me so that I can show it off and tell people about it. Do you like games? Do you play games? I'm guessing you mean like online uh, uh, computer games. Oh, uh, I don't know. But let's let's open it to everything. First of all, do you do you play computer mm -hmm. games? What well, computer games? I play occasionally something. I'm a casual gamer. I play the ten minute sort of games. So like your Angry Birds, and I've got an Atari that you plug into your TV, and I play Space Invaders. Proper old school Atari. Well, it's one of those you get in a, they put it inside a joystick, so you plug it straight to the TV. Cool. And it's and it's got my Super Mario on it and Space Invaders and Gallagher. I like Gallagher. I'm, I'm a demon on Gallagher. You can't beat me at Gallagher. And uh, do you play any? What do I call them? Real life games. Real life game. Real life games. I don't, I don't know what you call them. Those. I don't know. <laughs> what? What are you saying? Tag. Non electrical games. Do you play? You know what I'm asking. Answer the question. <laughs> um, um, oh, like, yeah, Monopoly. There we go. That's all I can think of. Board games. Oh, role playing games and things like that. Okay, so I'm not really in that world. So I guess not. Uh, role playing, um, board games. Uh, yeah, I have friends that do that. I'm not really into it. Any sports or anything you like? Uh, any sports? Nah. You're, you're, there's a game you tell me you play all the time. If you count, yeah, I play sport. If you count bar billiards as a sport, you're like really, you're obsessed with bar billiards. Um, you am. always talk to me about it. I'm obsessed you want to make a video about it? I do. I would love to make a video about bar billiards. Well, yeah. bar billiards is an awesome game. What is bar billiards for those who don't? Bar know? billiards. So um, billiards, you know, so you know, you've got cues and a table and and billiard balls, and so snooker is a sort of billiards game and pool, but bar billiards is. Uh, You've got you know, a couple of balls, you have to get them into the holes, the holes are in the table, they're not pockets at the sides, they're in the table. You get points. So you score as many points as you can, and uh, you have to score as many points as you can in 30 minutes. And it's awesome, it's brilliant. People have asked if you play chess, and if you have a preference for chess or drafts. Uh, I guess chess, really, uh, but I, I do play chess. Not that brilliant at it. Um, I used to play chess with my dad a lot. It was a nice thing we used to do. We used to have a chess board in the living room and we had a, a counter that was white on one side, black on the other. So we'd play a move and then walk away and then the next next day we'd come in and go, oh, I see, okay. We, we'd do that. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed doing that. People have asked whether or not you read the comments and the chats and things underneath videos. You're obviously in lots of videos, your own and number five. Do you, yeah. do you read comments? I read... I read all the comments on my own channel, uh, the comments and the messages I get, and I'm not always able to answer them all, even if I did, I mean, I, I just don't have time to answer them all, I'm sorry. Uh, and then on the number five ones, uh, I, I, I check, yes, so yes, I, I was considering denying it, because it kind of makes me less cool, but no, I check, I don't check them obsessively. <laughs> yeah, you're going. What are you pointing out, Brady? The, we ha there is someone commenting with using your face and the name James Grime on YouTube, yes. and we should point out that is not James. That is just some. Well, I won't. I won't use unsuitable words, but that's someone who it's, is it's not me. who is being creative, and that's not James. And people, I, don't, I personally don't think people should be doing that. But who am I? I'm just some guy. So <laughs> there you go. Someone asked a question a bit earlier though, that I did like, and that is when you like your life is so much. Maths and mathematics. Do you like find yourself just doing it without even meaning to, like counting the number of times you chewed that sandwich and <laughs> looking at looking at a shape or a house and thinking about dimensions and yeah. equations? Does it? Uh, no, not really. I mean, what we we talked about those vampires and uh, arithmomania and things like that, and the counting the numbers, and that's a real condition. There are people who do that, uh, and I don't think mathematicians, as a rule, are have arithmomania. Uh, I certainly do not. Uh, but maybe you're asking, maybe in broader terms, do I look at the world and see it you know, as equations and things like that? Uh, and do you know what? Pro yeah, I probably do not. I mean, I'm not going so much for the personal questions because you know, away from number file, you're your own man. But I do have to. I do have to ask, what pajamas you wear to bed? <laughs> okay. Um, Just because I didn't expect that question. Most of the questions I can expect, but. Um, oh right. Okay. Well, I guess I am. I'm. I'll t I'm considering lying, but I'll just tell you the real answer, shall I? 
Is uh, it like Spider Man or something? <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> no, I just I just wear the T-shirt that I'm wearing during the day, and then just... I've never seen you in a T-shirt. You're always wearing a shirt. Just this oh yeah, okay, all right, fair enough. Um, a lot of people have asked, do you have a preference for base twelve, base sixteen, or decimal? Base twelve, base sixteen, or decimal? Uh, I, I do you know what preference? I'm quite convinced by the base twelve people. Um, I like I like their arguments. They're, they're not grand. Yeah, it doesn't change mathematics in a in a grand way or in a fundamental way. But uh, the day to day use of it, I do actually agree with them. I wish we did have base twelve. Time would still be the same, but weights and measures should go back to being base twelve and. If you're quite new to number file, uh, I, we did a base yeah, we 12 did. video with James in it, uh, talking about the pros and cons of using base 12. And again, well worth a look after this, and I'll put a link in the video Do description. I, 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 because I like them, I'm going to give those guys a plug. That was the was it uh, Dosnell Society of America? And they have a Twitter account as well, and I have watched them on Twitter. And every day they give you a little base 12 fact, and. Uh, I, I really enjoy those. Well, they do one every day, don't they? Like, uh, yeah, pretty much. I they think should they do one every like twelfth day or something, right? Like, every twelve one. hours. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that, that's a better idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have a favourite branch of mathematics? Maybe you could quickly run through, mm. because I think it's really interesting, and it's not something we've talked about in number mm. file. Mm. How is mathematics broken into groups at kind of at that academic level? Like in chemistry, we have organic and inorganic and physical and things like mm. that. How do you break maths up and then what's what do you like? Yeah. So maths is broken up in the same way as chemistry is. Uh, so maths is broken up into, uh, well we've got uh, pure maths, let's start with pure maths and that's what I do, I'm a pure mathematician. Pure maths and then that's broken up into algebra and analysis. Now I do algebra and for, from my point of view I think algebra is about looking at the big picture, it's about large mathematical objects, whereas analysis is about the details. So it looks at the real numbers and it looks at those in details. And I'm more about algebra than analysis. Uh, there's statistics, uh, which I'm a big fan of statistics, probability statistics, uh, and then there's mathematical physics uh, and things of that nature, um, which, which I don't really do, uh, mathematical physics. Okay. Yeah. I'm cool with that. There's been a bit asked, and you probably are a good person to ask about this because you spend so much time uh, going to schools and meeting students. Yeah. And we've done a few videos on 60 Symbols, I think it was, that I did some videos about uh, education and how mathematics has this reputation uh, that sort of permeates society of maths is hard. It's almost a joke, isn't it, that, oh, this is, oh, no, I've got maths, maths is so hard. And it puts people off. There's a real stigma attached to it. What do you think about, you know, the state of maths education and the reputation of mathematics at that level of people who are just kind of at crucial parts of their lives? Yeah. So this idea that you know, maths is hard, that's certainly a cultural problem. Uh, so it's not true in other places and in other countries. And, and things like, you know, it's a boy subject or it's a girl subject. And this is, this is a cultural thing and there's absolutely no reason for that. Uh, but there is that reputation. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn. I'm not a maths teacher. I'm not a teacher. I don't want to speak for those. I, I, I am what I am. I, I am a, I, I'm an academic who sometimes I, I work with children and I enjoy doing so. Uh, so I don't want to speak out of turn. But there are, there are things that can be done. And I know there are a lot of people who care about maths education who are who know that there are things that can be done, they know what could be done, and they are trying to do that. And in a small part, I'm trying to do that too, uh, by showing you know, how maths can be inspirational and motivate people. I have my part as well. Uh, but there are better people who understand the problems better than I do. And I, I don't want to speak out of turn. A few quick ones. Pi or tau? Mm, do you know what? Number file has slightly convinced me. Because I, before your number file, pi and tau, 
one. The one um, with um, uh, Professor Moriarty in it. Yes, Phil Moriarty. Yep. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I was thinking Pi. Well, there's no, there's Pi's fine. I mean, there is absolutely no reason I, to change the towel. Yeah, you know, it makes it makes it makes sense as it is. And then Professor Moriarty said one thing that convinced me, and it was a towel is a full turn, and then and then you get a quarter of a turn, a half a turn, three quarters of a turn. Towel is a turn. Yeah. yeah. That convinced me for the first time. Really, I was I was I was pretty ambivalent about it, but uh, we'll give that to Professor Mario. What a great advertisement for the video! I hope you'll all go and watch it afterwards, and I'll put the link below. <laughs> and Professor Moriarty will be over the moon with your endorsement. How many digits can you recite pi to? I'm not putting you on the spot. For someone just up to the up to the count calculator le length, I guess. Three point one four one five nine two six five four. Oh, I don't know, I don't know, so Something I don't know if you're right or wrong. I'm sure we'll hear about it if you've got any of those wrong. Favourite food? Favourite food? I like Chinese. Oh, yeah, I like Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Oh, There's a good. really good Chinese on the corner. Right. Yeah? There is. I know you're going back to Cambridge, aren't you? But if you want to stay for a Chinese, with, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll sort you out. It's up to you. Favourite colour? Uh, nothing in particular. Nothing. Yellow. I like yellow. Why? Uh, it's a bright, colourful colour, and I, I I like the bright. I'm I have short attention span, and I like bright, shiny things. Yellow sunshine, yes. Okay. Uh, can you solve a Rubik's cube? Yeah. And how quickly? Uh, yes, but badly. You know, I've got one. Yeah, I can solve one in about four minutes. I'm afraid. I'm we're, not clever. We're not gonna. We're not gonna make you do it. No, on no. Spot. I I know the beginner's method, and and it takes me a long time. Uh, but I learnt I learnt to solve the Rubik's cube not as a kid. Uh, so I learnt to solve it because I use it as a prop, as a visual aid to teach group theory, which is which is my area of maths. Uh, and and the Rubik's cube is an is an application of group theory. So I I learnt it as a prop, uh, and I'm not very good at it. This is an interesting question. Answer carefully. Favorite YouTuber. What you what YouTube channels yeah. do you watch? Yeah, that's I've got inter loads. that's interesting to hear about. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do the science ones or the non-science ones? Go. It just <laughs> says it, the question just says favorite YouTuber. So okay, you, right. you go ahead. All right. Let's say oh, so. Brady is either. No, Pim no, no. You have okay. to stop. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> because seriously, periodic videos. You can just say all my channels as one. Yeah, and forget about yeah, it. Yeah, and, and, and Bible decks and things like that. I loved. Um, the maths channels, and I, I hope they they'll like this. Um, of course, we know Vi Heart is a, a brilliant channel, yes. and and yeah, there's things like Khan Academy. Um, a couple of my favourites that are less well known is Tai Yan. Uh, he's a maths teacher in Seoul in Korea, and he does mathematical puzzles and things. Tai Yan, T Y Y A N N, Tai Yan, and um, Dr. James Tan uh, Tanton. Sorry. I always get his S mixed up. Dr. James Tanton, uh, I think he lives in Australia now, and he has some fascinating, brilliant videos. I love him, uh, and people will be less aware of him. And then if we talk about non-science and maths, I have, I have lots of big ones, some that are less well-known. We're about to run a power... No, no, I've got a power... I'm going to say hello to my friends. Hang on, I've got a power cable. We're about to run out of power. All right. I've been talking too much. No, no, no. Do you know what? It was my fault. I, when we started, I said, oh, I must make sure I plug the power in. And then I didn't. We just right. got the power message. We'll change angle. This is putting a little bit more prominence on, uh, on me. Yeah. A couple of friends I want to say hello to. At YouTube. I am a YouTuber, so I do have friends. Um, Miss Mag 822 the magician. Hello. Uh, Eric Surf 6 Hello. Uh, and other, and other favourite channels I have. Um, community channel. Natalie, Nat, right? I am absolutely in love with Nat. Okay. Well, now you brought it up. I wasn't going to bring it up, but you say you're in love with someone. <laughs> there have been loads of questions about your availability or otherwise. I'm just saying there's been loads of questions. You can say what you want. Are, are, are they offers or are they just questions? I I wouldn't I wouldn't say they've been offers. <laughs> there's just I don't know if it's just a kind of a curiosity <laughs> with with other intent or or not. But I'm just saying there's been lots of questions, and I'm not saying anything. 
<laughs> well, then I'll just, yeah, here I am, this is me. Have you ever been to the Eiffel Tower? I guess that asking that because of the Eiffel Tower picture behind. <laughs> this is actually my office, of course, so that would have nothing to so, do with it. So, yeah, you should ask Brady that, and I haven't been to the Eiffel Tower. Have you never been to the Eiffel Tower? No, I haven't been to Paris. Look, look at this face. It's very look close. At his face. It's very close to here. I mean, I grew up in Australia, and I went to the Eiffel Tower. Um, well, that's a good question to ask you next, then. Favourite country to visit? Because obviously you have been to other countries. Yeah. Even if you haven't been to France, which is like a stone's throw away. <laughs> uh, favourite country? Um, some of my favourite countries. I like uh, Austria. Uh, uh, and I like Scandinavia. Uh, Sweden and Denmark. I, I lived in Denmark for about eight months. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yai Tara Igedansk. That's for the day. Same, for, same, same, same from me. Yeah. A lot of people actually. I know we're doing. I know these. What's your favourite things are a little bit boring, but we get asked them a lot, so I should ask them. I guess a lot of people have asked about your favourite TV show. Ooh, favourite TV show. And they've also asked what you think about some TV shows that involve numbers, like things like Numbers. Yeah, like Numbers. numbers. Yeah. Um, I've actually got Numbers on DVD. I've got the box set, uh, so I travel a lot. So I, I get box sets and I watch a lot of programmes as I'm travelling. And uh, I've got Numbers. I've actually seen the first couple of series. I'm told the first couple of series is the best, and it goes downhill. So that's I've got that to look forward to. And I liked what they did. So they were showing mathematicians not as um, these uh, people who can't communicate, who are antisocial, and all those horrible uh, cliches for mathematicians. They were showing a mathematician who um, was you know, brilliant and perfectly sociable, and how his maths could help. You know, and in the show, it's helping them solve crimes. But and the maths was good maths. It's all genuine maths, and it's. They had mathematicians help them come up with ideas and check it's, you know, check it's good. So it's got a bit of a thumbs up then? Yeah, I like, I like numbers. Well, what I've seen so far. The Someone, if I can in, inter, interrupt slightly, yeah. Yeah, someone has asked why I'm with you, possibly having a Chinese and not, <laughs> and not with Mrs. Number File on Valentine's Day. <laughs> And this is a fair point. So this is, a, and you've mentioned some of your favourite YouTubers. So yeah. this is a chance for me to get a message out. If you would like to subscribe to a channel and make Mrs. Number File very happy, subscribe to Kylie Caravan. Kylie K Y L I E Caravan C A R A. You know how to spell caravan. Go and subscribe to it, and then there'll be this big. It's a brand new channel, and I'm I'm helping make the videos, so it's got that touch of class about it. Um, but if there's a sudden spike in subscribers on there because of all you guys, that will that will be Valentine's Fantastic. present okay. taken care of. Kylie okay. Caravan. Getting back to getting back to the man. How you feel by the way, James has been like ridiculously sick for the last week and a half. That's the reason he wasn't able yeah. to take part in our this is a good biggest prank biggest prime <laughs> um, That's why he didn't take part in our biggest prime number yeah, video. I was really yeah. annoyed. And was... it's amazing that he's even come here today to help out and like You've been really struggling during filming, and this is obviously the webcam has just brought you to life. So, kudos to you for, yeah, for even doing that's, this. That's Doctor Theatre, isn't it? Uh, but I, I, I was it. I was really disappointed not to be in the prime number video last week because I, I, I really did want to be in that one. Oh, I like that. Do you prefer even or odd numbers? That's a good question. Uh, that's <laughs> that, even that the fact that I said that was a good question is a bit nerdy. Uh, do you know what? Off instinct, even numbers. What does that say about me? You like even numbers. I'm. St I like. I like order. That's yeah, what it says about I, me, I, I it? probably would have thought you'd say even because you, your favourite colour was yellow. You're more the kind of the happy, nice. You're not. You're not an edgy odd number kind of <laughs> kind of guy. Off kilter sort of person, though. Yeah. Uh, do you have? Someone has asked. Do you have your own channel? For those who didn't see the very start, and for those who don't already watch James's other channel, it's called Singing Banana. And he's been doing that for about five years yeah. now, and it's it's an ex. Watch my videos first. Yes. But if you want to see James's own channel and him doing a few of his own things, it's, you can go and look at Singing it's, Banana. It's homemade. As long as you've also subscribed to Carly Caravan, of course, because <laughs> it's Valentine's it's, Day. Yeah, re reduce your expectations because it's a homemade channel. So Yours it, is more. Yeah, it's more. Yeah, it's and it's more like like you know old school YouTube. I I like to think you know like. Like I'm just a I'm just a YouTuber. I'm I am one of you. 
can I... Um, there's another question that's come up a couple of times, and it's a question for you, but it's also maybe the birth of a, a future video I've been thinking about anyway, and I've been wanting to talk to people about anyway. Some people have asked what math or mathematics jokes or one-liners and that you like and don't like, and I know you love corny jokes, but I'm thinking we should do a mathematics joke video. <laughs> so if you've got any maths jokes that you like or don't like, put them in the Send description. Send them to Brady. Put them in the description. He but loves them. But no, no, but I think they'd make a good video. But you, I know you like a corny joke, and you must know a few. Are there any, you know? Uh, take epsilon less than zero. There you go. That's one for the math mos. What did you say? Take epsilon less than zero. That is killing. In all the math departments across the world, they that is slaying them. Really, really. That, they are loving that. Let's have that a is going down a storm. Let's have a look at the comments. James, are you really singing banana? Is that... Is yeah. That, yeah. You, you are well, really? yeah, I am the Singing Banana channel. I am Singing Banana. If you see a comment by Singing Banana, that's me. Uh, I'm not a Singing Banana myself. I'm just his agent. Why do mathematicians always confuse Halloween and Christmas? Is that a math joke? Beca yes, because, because OC 31 equals DEC 25. That's good. That's the go. that's the kind of stuff. That's I like. the level you're, you're that's, working at. That, that's actually good, though. I also don't mind the you know, you know, because seven, eight, nine type jokes. I, I like those corny ones too, but <laughs> that I quite liked. Um, do you watch Dara O'Brien's oh, yeah. um, right. School of Hard Sums, which I've never seen? Yeah, I've seen a couple of episodes. I've not seen them all. I've seen a couple of episodes. Dara O'Brien is a, a comedian in the UK. He's Irish himself. Uh, um, and he actually did a maths degree in town, he did mathematical physics. So he's, uh, he's from a mathematical background. He's got a TV show uh, in the UK called Hard, uh, School of Hard Sums. It's mixing maths with comedy. It's also with Marcus de Sautoy, who's a mathematician. Uh, he's great as well. I've actually helped them out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they wanted to do something about Enigma machines and codes. So I went down and, and helped them out. I'm not on telly. They didn't want me on telly. They didn't want this on no, TV. I've, I've, I phoned them up and actually sabotaged you because I, I'm trying to get you on an exclusivity deal for <laughs> okay. number five. Ah, I'll shake my fist at <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, So, But I, I did help them out. The Enigma machine, when that is aired, and I don't know when that's going to be, the Enigma machine is the one I look after, uh, which belongs to Simon Singh. And uh, the stuff that Marcus says is kind of stuff that I fed him as well. Uh, so... Hello to Marcus and, and Dara. I don't think they watch Number Five personally. You might be surprised. Really? I know. I know their producers do to steal ideas, but I don't think the actual. <laughs> uh, I don't think you may be surprised. Yeah, the producers do. They're, they're, no. They they um, Marcus said get James in because he has an Enigma machine. They said the producer contacted me. They said hello. Marcus said told us to say hello, and she knew who I was. I said. I do this thing called Number File, and she watches. Yeah. She was she didn't quite connect my name to to me, but she's yeah she watches too. So hi. Uh, a question, just because this has been asked so many times, I probably should ask it. A lot of people want to know if you play Minecraft. Uh, I, I think I've heard of it, so obviously I don't play Minecraft. Sorry, I don't. It's all right. We're all friends here. <laughs> Someone says this is a good question. Are you creative? Right, I see. Right. Do you know what? That's kind of leading me down a kind of a down a road where there's a speech down this road about maths being creative. And go on then. <laughs> no, maybe I'll just leave. Maybe I'll make it simple and just say, yeah, go on. From my point of view, maths is a creative subject. I mean, creating new mathematics is mathematics that's never been done before. Original new mathematics is a creative process. You don't do that by just being a robot, by being a machine. I truly believe that, and that's something I, I want to show people as well. Tell me about, about how a mathematician is creative then. Right, so when I discover something, yeah, I discover something new. So let's say I want to prove something. Okay, first of all, I had to come up with a conjecture, right? right? And that's a leap of intuition. Is that like a hypothesis? Yes, a hypothesis, exactly. So that's a leap of intuition, that's somewhere I want to get to. Uh, and that's a creative, intuitive thing. But then to prove it, I'm assuming that other people have not yet been able to solve it. So you're solving problems that other people could not solve, right? And that's 
amazing, that's brilliant, and to solve it, you might take something from over here, you take an idea from over there, and then you put these things together. You put them together in a new way, in a way that's never been done before, and you create something. You create something new, something that's never been done before. Cool. Yeah, and then that's true forever, and that's one of the amazing things about it as well. Someone wants to know how long this stream is going to be. They could watch it all day. That's up to you, Brady. Well, it's well. I don't know. You do have a train to catch, unless, you, unless you're going to stay around for that Chinese. But <laughs> we won't be able to go for too much longer. No, not too much longer. Maybe five minutes longer. Yeah. Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> do you prefer hot or cold weather? <laughs> uh, cold weather. There you go. I prefer cold weather too. There's a surprise. I had an answer for that one. Cold yeah. weather. Do you like sushi? Uh, I don't think I've ever tried it. I'm sorry. You've never had sushi? I don't think I have. You've never had sushi and you've never been to the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> I've never had sushi at the Eiffel Tower either. That's what you should do. That would, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, is there going to be a grime conjecture? Uh, grime conjecture. There's a grime corollary. Is that another grime or is that yours? No, it's me. What's uh, the grime corollary? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's only a little bit of fun, it's only a little thing, but um, there was an episode of Futurama where they were swapping brains. Did, have you seen it? I haven't, no. All right, so they had a brain swapping machine, so they could swap brains, yeah. uh, swap minds, but they couldn't swap them back. Once you swapped, couldn't be swapped back. One time, dear. So they were all swapping brains, yeah. right? And they were all mixed up. And they go, oh no, how are we going to get back to where we were? Because you can't just reverse the steps. Yeah. And so... And this is brilliant. The guy who wrote the episode was a math, was a maths graduate himself, uh, Keeler. He was called Keeler, and he actually wrote a theorem uh, so that to to you could do this in general. And it's in the episode. It's really it's on shot on a blackboard on, on in the cartoon. Uh, how to do it in real life. And I made a little, and it's true and it works, and I made a little conjecture about it. Well, in that example that was in Futurama, you could have actually done it in fewer, new, in fewer moves. And, and, and that it, sounds like a number file video. It's, it's a little fun thing. That sounds like it could be a number file video. I'll tell you what, we'd better wrap things up. All right. But uh, we'll read through all the comments and things that you've written later on, and I'll certainly go in and have a chat when, the, when I get the chance. It's not always easy to reply to comments in these different comment sections, but I think we'll find a way to do it. And James may or may not as well. His username is Singing Banana. Yeah. And don't forget there's this other idiot who's using James's picture and calling himself James Grime and writing here. And if you see him, like, do whatever you can. What do you call it? Flame him or thumb him down thumb or down. make sure everyone knows that that guy is a bit of an imposter and... <laughs> Yeah, I don't well, know. Hang on, don't set the uh, the angry mob on him. No, 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 no. Yeah, sorry. Don't don't be angry, but don't let other people think it's James because you it's know, because not. not James is singing banana, as you know. And don't forget to subscribe to Carly Caravan and make my Valentine's Day much easier. <laughs> uh, thank you. Glad to help. Thank you, James, for for coming along. Uh, and as I said, we filmed a bunch of number yep. five videos earlier as well, so you're going to be seeing plenty of James. Even though I'm not going to be seeing much of James over the next month or two, yeah, uh, you'll still be seeing him on number five. I'm not seeing him because he's just really busy with work, So, uh, but we'll catch him again in the middle of the year. But you will keep seeing him on number five. And uh, it, was, it was good fun. I actually really enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good fun. Yeah, you know... I'm my own favourite subject. So I could have done that you know, till the cows come home, but I think now's a good time to wrap it up. Cool, and we'll be doing, we'll hope to do more of these kind of things, both with James and with others and with multiple people, because it's good fun. It's really good fun talking to you guys in real time. So cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. See you later.